Having discussed the uh, sum of products and product of sum representation, uh, we have one final point to close uh, this particular topic, right? So, we had earlier said that the sum of product, right, could also be represented in this form, right? We said if you had a function of x, y, z equal to this, right, right, then you could represent this as a sum of either, you know, you could say m0, m3, m7, right. Since it is a three variable uh, Boolean function, you have about, you have eight combinations and, and therefore we are saying this sum of product is m0, m3 and m7, right. So, this also implicitly assumes that um, x is the msb of the um, binary number that we are representing because we have numbers 0, 3 and 7 and that needs to be translate to a uh, to a, a certain location in the truth table, right. And that is implicitly assumes that the first variable on the left here is the msb and the lsb is the rightmost, right. So, if I look at the sum of product representation, we are basically saying 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, right. And we have said that the sum of product is term and this is the decimal, decimal equivalent, decimal number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right. So, you have the 1, uh, then you have at 3 and then you have at 7, right. The remaining locations we are saying is basically 0. This is what uh, we said. So, this representation here allowed a very compact representation instead of writing like a very large truth table. Alternately, you can also write this, you know, in the product of some form and simply say that this is the product of the max terms of the remaining numbers, right. For example, this is going to be, uh, you know, small m we are going to use to represent a min term, right. So, if you see this is a min term, okay. So, you know these three are basically min terms, right. 0, the remaining numbers here are what you call the max terms, okay. And therefore, you can also write this f of x, y, z in the equivalent representation, which is basically m1, m2, uh, m4, m5, and m6. Right. So, this is remember it is a product of sums and therefore, each m this is a max term. Okay. So, effectively if you go back and look at this f of x comma y comma z, right. The sum of product is obviously going to be x bar, y bar, z bar. Okay. For m0, okay, this is m0 or with m, sorry, x bar, y, z, m3, right. Or uh, let us take m7, which is x, y, z, m7, okay. Yeah, this can be simplified further by taking y, z common and then saying, uh, you know, there is x plus x bar that becomes 1 and so on, okay. The, all those things can be done 
and this can also be written as the product of sums m1 for example is going to be uh, what is it that can make it 0 you have to look at the combination of the sum of x y z which can go to 0 and therefore it has to be x or y or z bar this is m1 and with you are going to and it with m2 right so what is that it is x or y bar or z so this is m2 and then you have m4 which is x bar or y or z okay m4 uh, 5 yeah and then uh, m5 is basically x bar or y or z bar m5 or uh, sorry and the last term which is uh, capital m6 right and that is nothing but x bar or y bar or z this is m6 right so effectively what you have now is two standard canonical representations for the same function either as a sum of product or a product of sum uh, and it can be represented very compactly in this notation and it has a one to one mapping with a truth table right so we will be using this notation and using this representation quite extensively going forward.